I want to bring in our next guest, Stacey Warden. She's the CEO of the Algorand Foundation, which is a blockchain that works to have minimal impact on the environment. Stacey, thanks so much for joining us. How exactly do you do that? Well, you know, it gets pretty uh, technical pretty quickly, but we were founded by Silvio McCauley, who's a Turing Award winner in uh, computer science. He's a tenured professor at MIT, 25 years, and he invented a couple of things that were very, uh, they're fundamental to crypt cryptocurrency overall. So zero knowledge proofs, verified random functions. These are his, you know, pillars that uh, came from his inventions. And so he watched the space and he saw sort of the earlier layer one protocols that were costly. They were, uh, had a very large environmental footprint. They are slow. And so he said to himself, you know, I could probably build something better than that. And the thing in crypto is it's all about the consensus mechanism. Everything comes down to the quality of the consensus mechanism. And he came up with a very elegant consensus mechanism called a pure proof of stake consensus mechanism. And this enables Algorand to be at the same time, very decentralized, highly secure and highly scalable. And the thing that's kind of interesting about that is that was a challenge that Vitalik Buterin set out a number of years ago. He said, it's impossible. If you want scalability, you've got to give up decentralization or you've got to give up um, security. You can't have all three at the same time. And Algorand, mm -hmm. you know, famously has broken through that trilemma. So you get all three with a very low well, carbon footprint. Question here for the people who believe so heavily in Bitcoin that don't want to move to a proof of stake concept here. What are the frictions in, in converting some of those believers? Well, you know, Bitcoin is a digital store of value. So it's really, it's a digital gold, but it can't do things that other layer one protocols can do that are enabled by smart contracts, right? So it's a kind of, um, it's a different game actually. And so the, all of the supply chain management that you can do, the, um, the, the various things that come from um, uh, the ability to have money that's programmable, you can't you can't really do on the Bitcoin uh, blockchain. So for that, you need to look at other kinds of layer ones. And Algorand is built to compete with traditional finance because it's fast enough, and it has final it has um, 4.5 second final finality settlement finality. So it's really up it's trying to go up against the big boys of uh, traditional finance and and can compete quite well in that realm. You mentioned Vitalik Buterin, the co-founder of Ethereum. He's been on the show, so we've certainly heard his arguments. It's the second largest cryptocurrency. It's gearing up for this big transition to proof of stake from proof of work, which of course is often framed as the you know environmental villain here. What are you looking for um, with the Ethereum merge, and what are your expectations for what comes after it? Well, look, I, you know, we've been waiting for that upgrade for a while. I have no particular insight into their uh, product timeline at all. But I do know that it, in its nature, by its nature, a proof of work protocol is not going to be environmentally friendly because the way that those nodes agree, they're running kind of an arms race of energy consumption in order to be first to win the race to append the next block. And so proof of stake protocols are more environmentally friendly. The problem is that proof of stake traditional proof of stake protocols tend to go to sort of, you know, the winner takes all mentality. And, you know, by the way, when the person, when the node with the highest stake gets to append the next block, well, then all of the bad actors know where to attack. So they tend to be a little bit less secure. So uh, Algorand uses a pure proof of stake protocol, which uh, leverages a fair amount of uncertainty by these verified random functions that give you this sense of uh, security because you don't know where to attack and a very light carbon footprint. Stacey, I'm, worried, I'm wondering if you can parse through the noise here a little bit because so many Bitcoin miners out there are trying to be greener, but when you're still offer, uh, off, operating on a proof of work concept here, can you really be that green? I mean, how much progress can these miners actually make here when it comes to the overall carbon pr footprint of, of Bitcoin? Well, you know, I think they're up uh, against a pretty seriously steep hill, but they can do a couple of things. You know, first of all, the, the energy that uh, powers the miners can be uh, renewable energy, of course. That's the most obvious. And then, you know, Bitcoin advocates will point out, and they're right, that they don't get energy subsidies for any of the energy that they use. So they use a fair market price for that energy, unlike many other uh, industries. And they'll also say, look, we are portable and we will go to wherever the lowest cost energy source is. You know, you don't move to Tennessee because your electric bill is going to be cheaper there, but a Bitcoin mining rig will move where there is, um, you know, renewable power and cheaper sources of power. So that's the kind of things that they would say to stick up for themselves. But look, they get it, I would say, more and more. They know that they need to, to, to become greener. It's just that it's 
very hard to do on a proof of work protocol. It's like it's baked into the to the mechanism of the protocol that makes it hard to do. Now, Congress is is starting to look more closely at the climate impacts of crypto. What are you expecting in terms of regulation? You know, I don't think they're going to, you know, I don't know, first of all, it's important to say that, but I don't think they're going to look deeply at the carbon footprint from a regulatory point of view. I mean, this this may happen, but they are they are very concerned about investor protection and anti-money laundering and that kind of thing. And so that's where regulation tends to uh, stake its claim, I would say. But look, I mean, not just for Congress, but for American people and for businesses that know that they need to be green and they have ESG um, uh, goals that they have to meet, they are not going to tolerate putting large scale businesses on a blockchain that, that uses a lot of energy consumption. I mean, you saw what happened with World Wildlife Fund when they tried to issue NFTs on Polygon. Polygon is a proof of stake blockchain, but it's built on Ethereum and Ethereum is a proof of work blockchain. And so, you know, the British conservatives, um, uh, uh, environmental conservation people were up in arms about this. So World Wildlife Fund had to take back the NFTs. The guys that bought the NFTs were mad. I mean, the whole thing was just a, a mess. And it's because, you know, they didn't, the World Wildlife Fund didn't choose a carbon negative layer one blockchain, uh, which, you know, Al Grand is. They should have chosen us. Really quickly here, I'm wondering if you look over the next six months, what are the most promising applications that are going to be built upon Algorand that'll help push it forward? Oh, I thought I only had about seven or 10 minutes for this segment. So, uh, <laughs> no, you know, the thing about Algorand is it can handle scale. So right now we're doing 1,000 transactions per second. We can do 10,000 transactions per second by uh, July. And it has immediate finality. So in 4.5 seconds, it's settled, it's final settlement. So you don't have to worry about forking. You don't have to worry about that uncertainty. So that, of course, lends itself to a number of different applications. First of all, and I think most fundamentally for us, and it's kind of our North Star, is financial inclusion. So we've got, you know, 1.7 billion people in this world that don't have access to finance. And so Algorand can scale and can scale with a light carbon footprint to, to make sure that that can happen for those 1.7 billion people. And of course, there's tons of supply chain kind of plays. And a lot of, we have a lot of environmental and climate focused applications built on Algorand because they need to be. So Planet Watch is a very good example um, where they do, they put sensors in the air to see air quality. And of course you need that kind of thing on a blockchain because you don't want uh, cheating with the data. 